Then he had to convince the divided membership of the 25 EU governments. In my experience, any side typically moves only when they feel they have to and when they are confident that others are moving as well. But when time is short and the complexity immense, as it is in the case of Doha, this is taking a big risk with the whole enterprise. Uh, but those on the Hill, you know, who may, be, uh, may have other ideas. And may be so there is a great deal at stake for both the United States and for Europe, and a successful Doha round can still bring a wide range of political and economic benefits if we can get our respective domestic politics in place to allow us to deliver from this round. Well, President Bush's ambition and his aspiration, frankly, I applaud what he said. The, where we face such sort of daunting uh, uh, loss of life and suffering as we've seen, but which has such a knock-on economic effect as we're seeing now, then it's all hands to the pump to make sure uh, that we arrest the deterioration in confidence uh, and limit the setback uh, that we're going to see for some time to come uh, as a result of uh, uh, Katrina. And that's why I want to see not just the Doha round, but other international uh, efforts made uh, to stimulate economic growth, to give people hope, to... Uh, loss of farm bill uh, in this country. <laughs> the fear of China factor is felt throughout the whole world, eroding the enthusiasm of many, even more, I suggest, in the South than the North, for further liberalizing international trade. There are people who say to me, look, Peter, this isn't so much a Doha round, it's a China round, if we're not careful.